There we go. The 12th drop podcast already. Welcome, guys. Uh, we've got some guests today. The Rogue Wolf and also we got Brat New. And then me, myself, of course. Uh, let me quickly fix this because something is going wrong here. Anyway, um, do we need to introduce you guys or? <laughs> Actually, let, let's ask me. Let, let's ask me this. What have you guys done the past week? Oh, well, I've been working on my beginner guide for Planet Side Two. That's pretty good. How far have you gotten? I've actually got it open right now. I've got all my voice clips recorded. It's just a matter of choosing footage to use. Oh, nice. I, myself, yeah. haven't really done a whole lot. I've just uh, been streaming every day, pretty much. Every day that isn't weekends and Wednesday. And what game did you stream? I've been streaming the Mass Effect series. The Mass Effect, nice, nice. It's my first playthrough, so... I'm uh, so... What, uh... <laughs> Shall we start uh, with the first topic, or...? Sure. Okay, let me quickly remove this because nobody can see us right now. Oh, what is the first topic again? I, I forgot it. What's the list? <laughs> uh, BG. BG. I don't know what that stands for. Oh, no. BG is just a typo. <laughs> oh. A server performance, then. Server uh, performance. You haven't been playing, have you, brand new? I, not really, ever since. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of problems, server performance being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past week and a half ish, uh, I just want to stay away until it's it's until it's pretty fixed. Uh, I've been playing a little bit though, and I haven't really had many problems except for at first. But I think we discussed that in the last podcast. Yeah, not really. That's been not really been fixed a lot. Uh, there has been a patch though. Last uh, Friday, I think, just before the weekend. Yeah. And right now, the stable, the server should be stable, just in general. So that should yeah. be kind of fixed. Uh, last time I played, it was actually really good. It, it was the same as it was before DirectX 11. Mm -hmm. or, but, or at least very close. What, with better frames, more or less? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Wolf? I'd say the same. I actually haven't played since that last patch came in, but um, I've got some footage from Wednesday where uh, I basically destroyed a Reaver and it took 20 seconds to explode. So uh -huh. that was pretty bad. Hopefully they've got all that ironed out now. Well, I mean, from my experience, they have. I mean, after Friday, Friday I couldn't even play, to be honest. Uh, the servers were just keep on disconnecting us. Mm -hmm. But Saturday we played, yesterday we played, and uh, it was pretty good. Did you yeah, play with the I squid again, though? Yeah, they did, a, they did a stream on Saturday. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah I was um, watching them and Nico at the same time, and it looked like uh, both servers were doing relatively well, so... I'm sorry, I'm yeah. working out something with the brand new image because I can't get your 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 camera ah. on the stream, strangely enough. Oh, that is weird. Make it work. Just <laughs> you're just taking a random Yeah. <laughs> Still image. Anyway, um yeah, server performance has been better. A lot of people have been complaining the last week, but I think right now it isn't that bad, so we can we can better go just go in the game and play again. So that's that's just nice. Yeah. Okay, next on the list we had... Uh, got it again. Population on the rise. Yeah, and that was actually kind of surprising because I think uh, yesterday we had the highest peaks again. So not directly after the patch, but, you know, a, f a few days, like a week after the patch again. So I really? think the tides have turned. I th yeah, I, I'm I, definitely I, seeing much larger battles myself. Yeah, I, I also have from the little amount I've been playing. I, I, I hope. That it's on the rise it it'd be awesome to get new players in though how many veterans are willing to teach the new players 
That's the question. I think actually I, I've been playing with all different outfits and they all have like their own more or less training programs. And they also, they, they of course focus on existing players, but also on the really new players. Okay. But I, I do think Varen's are willing to train the new players. It depends if you think a bit on the server. On Emerald, I see a lot of those initiatives. Uh, Miller, a bit less. So. Since uh, we had a peak at, on May 4th, so yesterday, and that was the highest it's been since, like, yeah, no, it is actually going up, according to Steam charts. Yeah, it's so strange, actually. I, I thought, my initial thoughts were like, okay, we'll have a big boost on the day the patch will come, and then after that, we'll have a steady decline again. I don't know. I think things also, of course, more and more people are hearing about this new upgrade, this new update, DirectX 11, new NSOPS. And it also brings in a few more content creators. And I think also, I don't know if you guys know Kamikaze 78. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He made a new video about this, the time to start playing Planetside 2. And I think that video had like 40,000 views already. So YouTube is also pushing Planetside 2 back to the people again. So, yeah, that's also, I think, the reason why. We're seeing more people. The question is, what's the limit? Because we're still uh, under the... I think in 2018, we had more players, right? Uh, 2000 still? 2018, it's... I mean, maybe slightly. But it's. it seems like it was pretty steady. Yeah, like roughly 3,000, just above 3,000. Mm -hmm. And yeah. around... And then it went down to uh, just under 3,000. And now it's going back up a little bit to yeah. what it was in 2018. If you look at the charts, they lost a lot of players after the announcement of Planetside Arena. I don't, think, I don't know if there's like a correlation between those two things, but... I can't time... imagine it helped. Yeah, <laughs> like the final push downwards. Mm-hmm. I think there was a, um, a mindset that the announcement of Arena was kind of a death knell for PS2. They, they probably expected the devs to just dump Planet Side mm -hmm. 2 and put everything on Arena. That didn't really play out that way, though. Uh, yeah. I, I thought Planet Side Arena would bring more players back, to be honest. But... It's, a, it's a bit of a, you know, some people, some of the. Players in Planetside Arena, Planetside 2, don't like the concept of Battle Royale. And Battle Royale was kind of pushed with the whole Planetside Arena thing. So, mm -hmm. I think for some people yeah. that was like the, 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 the sign that the Daybreak team was going the wrong way at Planetside, so... Yeah, and that's all they had, like, ready, ready in, in quotes. Like, in, you know, it wasn't ready, obviously. But that's all they kind of were working on at the time. I guess. That was their focus. They did talk about like another mode, but they didn't really embellish on it or anything like that. It was just all new battle royale mode. Try this. Look at this. Look at this. True. Yeah, now coming now could they come up with like capture the flag and all the other things as well. So we'll see how it will be in the end. I think it will also have a focus on those team that match modes. Talking about Battle Royale, by the way, uh, have you guys heard about this new game called Mordhau? Or yes, like, uh, I, I don't think it's Battle Royale, though. Yeah, it has like a Battle Royale mood. It's, it's for, the, for you guys that are watching right now. It's a medieval, more or less first-person game, or is it also third-person? It's If if anybody's heard of... Uh, I think it's first-person. If anybody's heard of Chivalry, Medieval Warfare or oh, yeah. something, yeah. it's like a spiritual successor. Uh... But it has like a battle royale mode. I've seen it. Uh, okay. But the main, the main, the main people are playing like front lines. I think it's called, and it's just like battlefield. So I think it's not sixty four against sixty four, but at least a big fight of the players and like more, like more like conquest. So I think they are using battle royale to pull in the people, and then you know you just <laughs> they're mainly playing okay. the other modes as well. I'm, I'm imagining something similar to. Planetside Arena in the future. Yeah, I was... I mean, I don't think they need a Battle Royale to pull in players for that game, but... Hey, 
it's the big thing now. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious how Battle Royale fits into a setting like that, really. Yeah. Uh, well, it's like a first-person, highly skill-based melee combat. So you, you really have to be aiming and kind of manage your swings and stuff because it's very weighty. Mm-hmm. So. You have to time right, right? Like with yes, a lot of timing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of weird because I know that um, For Honor was kind of uh, predicated on that, but then it turned out to be who could get a two-on-one. Basically. Yeah. Well, Mordhau doesn't have a lock-on system or anything, so. Uh, okay. But, man, so have we not heard anything for Planet Side Arena? little Not bit there was one tweet i don't know if you guys know um i lost the name on carter so you got a few developers that were working on the game they previously worked on h1z1 and okay. uh, i'm just looking for the tweet right now but he tweeted that he's going to show off some more artwork for the game because he's been working on more stuff but he wasn't allowed yet to to share it with the people so he, he's going to share some more artwork because in the meantime there have been Work, of course. They have an update as well. But I'm curious. I don't know what, what to expect for kind of artwork. Maybe more vehicles because they were adding vehicles to the game. Yeah. At least according to the the uh, data mining stuff. So maybe they're going to show some vehicles, which I think would be cool. That would be actually. But uh, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> vehicles. Uh... They they already have a hard time balancing it in Planet Side Two. Obviously, it's it's going to be easier balancing a battle royale game, but uh, vehicles tend to throw in quite like which battle royales now have vehicles in it. Battlefield, Firestorm. They have a lot of vehicles actually. Um, they were, they were Blackout. Fine. Blackout has at least one that I can think of. It's got like a, a carrier. With oh, okay. People. But you mean like uh, vehicles so that can fire back, right? Oh, the vehicle itself yeah. can't fire back, but the uh, passengers can. Yeah, yeah. The the Battlefield Firestorm actually has like multiple vehicles that can fire, like real big tanks. But what they did very clever, and I missed that in the Battle Royale beta from Planet Side, was that in Firestorm and Battlefield Firestorm, there were like uh, anti tank grenades, like uh, rocket launchers everywhere spread on the map. So it was actually pretty easy to destroy the vehicles. So okay. it, was, it was still strong to have like a tank, but it was easily to counter at least. Uh, and what you had in the last beta session, I think, they added like the decimator. But the thing is, if you had a decimator, you had to give up one of your one of your two weapon slots. Yeah. So well, it was, I mean, yeah? they're they're thinking of doing like a I don't know what what the concept's entirely going to be like yet for these power weapons or something, like uh, special weapons that you pick up oh or... yeah the power weapons yeah yeah maybe rocket launchers are going to be kind of like that or like mini guns are going to be like that maybe i don't know we haven't really had the we have seen the the, the harasser in the game and in plan side 2 you can already fire with small arms on harassers to kill it right they yeah. can't use small arms to kill lightnings or other things right so no. right my question is if that's like uh, an underbarrel great launcher will that maybe be a bit more powerful, for example, then. Because um, you... in the base game, you can use an underbarrel grenade launcher to damage heavy armor. I'm, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. But I think I that would be that. part of the balance, then maybe if if you if they keep like a separate decimator slot as well. Because I was just thinking, how many how many things do they have in Plant Side Two to help you take out vehicles, like heavy armor? Like they they have C four, the archer, uh, uh, rocket, launcher, rocket launchers, rocket launcher for the light assault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rocket launcher. That's really about it. Yeah. I mean, are they going to include mm -hmm. all of those? I mean, they already have rocket launchers in Planet Side Arena. I, I don't and C four and tank mines, but. I don't, I don't see tank mines being very uh, useful in a battle royale environment. You're not going to be retreading the same area very often. <laughs> Do people use the hunter crossbow with explosive uh -huh. bullets? Actually, <laughs> actually, 
um, a while back after they had been introduced, I remember seeing a thread on the official forum. Somebody wanted them nerfed because, like, an entire platoon of infiltrators were sitting by a uh, vehicle spawn and just insta giving vehicles with really? them. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's a whole platoon, though. Yeah. Anything's overpowered if you got 12 people doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I do hope they keep, like, the the meme weapons as well in, in Planet Arena. Just to make some cool plays sometimes. I'm looking yeah. for the tweet still, but I can't find it. It's I, like I, a, I, yeah. I I hope they come up with new vehicles. Like not including you don't I hope they don't include the current heavy armor vehicles in the plant side arena. Oh, by the way, talking about new vehicles, have you guys maybe seen the Wasp already in the game? The Wasp. Not the wasp. I, I've seen personally. a I've seen a picture of it. It's basically yeah. a differently colored Valkyrie bin model. Yeah, and it has a turbo boost that uses cordium. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like in uh, Nitro or something like that to, to fly fast. Yeah like, yeah, like a Nitro, yeah. Okay, that's cool. And, and it uh, also can carry maxes. Yes. Which is pretty sweet. Yo. Because right now, the only vehicles that can carry maxes are Sunderers and Galaxies. What if, what if they made max weapons just to harvest Cordium? <laughs> huh. Mm. You can carry a couple maxes around and harvest tons more cordium. I don't know. That might be interesting. I'm thinking about it. Uh, I don't know. The, the mining laser is also pretty useful because right now you, the only other vehicle is the ant. So maybe it's also just quicker to just use the wasp to make to make bases, maybe like that. Or, or aren't you not like are you not able to build bases with the wasp? I, I don't no know. We will see. It's it's not supposed to be in the game yet. I think it's a bug or discovered by accident by somebody. <laughs> like Rel posted on Reddit that it should not be in the game yet. So, oh, I see. Okay, yeah, because a uh, friend of ours was able to. I think he saw it in game or was using it in game. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. he, he's the one who posted a picture for us. Ah, to see. okay, okay, I see. Uh, the model isn't completely finished yet, and they're still working on the, I think, some of the mechanics okay. as well. But it, it yeah, should be the reward for the new... Actually, what is the reward for the new alert, the refine and refuel alert? That is the WASP, uh, right? I th isn't it a discount on ants, maybe? Oh, it's a discount. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've never won one of those. So <laughs> no, think... me neither. Did any of you, by the way, actively participate in the new event? New no, I don't. I don't. I've never actually done anything related to the construction yet. Not even like uh, accordion harvesting. Yeah, um, I mean, if you, I, yeah, I tried participating in it, but at the time there was a tons of people on, and the servers were bad, and. It was just, it was a mess. Uh, and then I haven't seen one since. So I, I haven't been able to. Okay. More about that later then. I will try to do one next week just to see how it feels. Because I think it's, the, 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 the idea was that you have like these armor columns that would protect the ants. But yeah. I don't think that's happening right now. I've seen a few, few lightnings sometimes guarding the ants or guarding the, in the caution spots. Well, not really. Ants are pretty tanky as they are. Yeah, to be honest. Uh, I'd I'd say about like ninety percent of the time I see an ant on the field, it's being used offensively instead of yeah, yeah. Uh, Battle ants. Mm -hmm. Well, together with the update and together with all the instability as well. There were also some fun bugs, and some have been fixed already. Uh, one of the bugs is the spawn beacon bug and the router bug. You could have instant respawns at a router or a spawn beacon. Have you guys yes. played with that before? And what do you think about it? <laughs> it wasn't oh. just those. There were times you could use a regular base really? uh, spawn instantly too. Okay. And I'm kind I... of a mixed mind about it because 
uh, getting back into the fight again immediately is enjoyable, but then you start feeling like killing an enemy isn't really effective if they're right back at your face five seconds later, practically. The whole I, purpose, yeah. I enjoyed having no respawn timer, but obviously that's broken. Uh, but now that people have experienced it, do you think they should find a balance between what used to be and what was uh, and the instant, like maybe instead of two minutes to spawn at a beacon, it's like a minute instead or something. I think it's a minute and a half um, base for a uh, spawn beacon spawn. Yeah. That, oh, okay. that was the original, right? I think that what they want to do is they want to, they have this whole new spawn system, right? You have like mm -hmm. three three uh different stages the first priority second priority and the third priority and if i'm correctly spawn beacon should be part of the second priority so that should not be directly available but after 15 seconds but i don't know how long the time of them would be so if you how do you say this correctly in english <laughs> uh, how long like the base timer would be yeah, in i, I don't know tiers? I, I thought Rel said that after 15 seconds, you could use it again. So you, do, oh. you, you, you die, and then you have to wait 15 seconds, and then you can directly use the spawn beacon again. Uh, that... But not instantaneous, but a pretty short timer, 15 seconds. That, that would be awesome for, I mean, as a solo player, that, that doesn't really help. But uh, when you're in small groups, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, for large mm -hmm. platoons being able to s just constantly spawn in people i don't know i feel like that would throw something out of whack unless they disable spawn beacons for overpopulated fights that could also be an option yeah i don't know because you have to remember that spawn beacons only work for the uh platoon and routers and sunderers are for everybody so they should have a little bit more effectiveness than, say, a router. Oh, yeah, that's true. And don't forget, you can also just destroy the routers and the spawn beacons as well. True. Yeah. Can, can you use, um, what's the name? ES. The grenades. EMP? You, EMP grenades. Can they do they destroy spawn beacons and routers? Spawn beacons, yes. I think, actually, no, I'm thinking of, um, I'm thinking of the motion spotters. The, um... Routers, they do not affect. I couldn't tell you certainly about the uh, spawn beacons. Mm, okay. So maybe you have to change your play style to also to destroy spawn beacons then if we see that these, the respawn time will be very very short and low. Mm -hmm. but I don't know. Right now, how it is right now, is you have to be alive. For, you have to wait for like two minutes before you can use a spawn beacon. That's broken as well. But right now, effectively, the spawn beacon is not usable. Well, we, we don't want spawn beacons to replace Sunderers for people. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, and, and in a way, they never could. But mm -hmm. for a squad, you could just send a guy over, put a spawn beacon down, and then everybody could just keep using that. Uh, so that's probably why they have a long timer for it. It's supposed to be something you you go in with one guy put it down and then everybody deploys on it all at once yeah mm. it, it, it's kind of the portability of spawn beacons it really gives them their power because you can put it on a tower you can stick it in a distant corner somewhere you can put it on top of a tree in hassen and then nobody will ever get to it yeah yeah that, that's annoying by the way if i'm talking about these spawn beacons that people use to like actually abuse more these trees in hassen to snipe from a cheeky location that's so annoying mm -hmm. i think priority stuff like if you for people that are defending a base uh priority for destroying sunders like that should be priority mm -hmm. uh and then afterwards spawn beacons like but if you reduce the timer too much on the spawn beacon then spawn beacons become essentially sunders for for the squads and then the beacons become priority uh, you know there's I, I have a thought about that um maybe sunderers should probably get the most priority because they're the most vulnerable and when they have the priority and they become valuable that'll encourage more people to defend them 
then you have more team play and interaction rather than just, oh, there's one Sunderer somewhere out there. Somebody brings a lightning along, boom, it gets blown up. I don't know. Um, I'm also bringing up this topic because we've got um, Serious Gaming. You today uploaded a video talking about that Planetside is changing into a, a team that match game, basically, thanks to the thanks to the instantaneous uh, spawn beacons. Mm -hmm. What do you kind of said? Like, yeah, keep it like that, keep it instantaneous, and then just change the battle flow like that directly. But I don't know. I I'm thinking like Planetside is really this this. Uh, how do you say this? This big like warfare, base. you bring Sundays, you use galaxies, you use Valkyries to bring people to the combat. It's not like you always use joint combat like that. I mean, for some people, I'm sure it definitely is a team deathmatch scenario, just on a larger scale. But for, for outfits that with coordination, then it, for some people it could be um, almost an RTS game. It's not, it's not always going to be a team deathmatch for everyone. Uh, but I guess with the with the instant spawn beacons, sure, you can make the argument that it's becoming more of a team deathmatch. But I, I just I don't see it. See, um, there's kind of there's kind of a, um an audience that wants to be that wants the game to be a lot more tactical than I really think it should. I mean, I like it best when it's kind of in between the team deathmatch and like, like the uh, like it wants to be Arma. Some people want it to be Arma. Mm -hmm. They want it to be like everybody's got to get the ride. They've got to spend a lot of time getting to the battle and then setting up, and then if you get killed, you're kind of out, and you have to start yeah. all over again. And I don't want the game to be that. I mean, we've already got Arma. I just I like it in between. I like it where if I'm solo, I can like kind of hop around fights. I can get into the action. But with like the team play, if I'm in a squad or a platoon, okay, yeah, you can get together, you can get in your uh, Sunder and your your uh, galaxy, and you can uh, like make a big effect in fights by um getting yourself to the fight and dropping on it. Yeah, like individuals working together yeah. instead of pawns being directed. Mm -hmm. kind of deal. I agree. By the way, just uh, you haven't noticed yet, there is right now a giveaway in the chat. It's for 500 daybreak cash. Uh, what we have to do is exclamation mark tickets and then of ticket exclamation mark ticket and then you can only fill in one. It's the amount of tickets you can buy. And right now we've got two entrances, so that's uh, the chance is 50-50 will win something. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty high. Yeah, that's pretty high. Good luck, contestants. Yes. I don't know. I uh, I said this before uh, in the in the comments of Sirius that I think really if you want, I think you should separate like the team that match mode of Planet Arena then and and the bigger warfare modes of Planet Side Two, and then in the end of course you will get the divide. You have to divide between people that wanted to be like oh my like you mentioned, but those people want to go, they stay at Planet Side Two, and the other people just you know go to Planet Side Arena then. That's my personal thought about this. But... Mm -hmm. well I don't think the instant spawn beacons were intentional. No, no, like, it wasn't. But I also don't think Daybreak entirely knows what they want Planetside to be. No. <laughs> well, it's like so, I commented on Sirius's video. I don't think the player base knows what they want Planetside to no, be. No, that's a good one. <laughs> I mean, you... I like the, that's what I want. I want there to be a lot of different ways to be able to approach the game, not just like you have to be in a squad and you have to listen to orders and you have to get on the galaxy and ride there and if you get shot down along the way well tough luck you have to start over yeah i think if plant side arena comes out and they do have team deathmatch and stuff like that capture the flag you know things that can be balanced in in a closed environment uh unlike planet side 2 mm -hmm. then go that way and then make planet side 2 the large fight uh, team play kind of thing. You know, separate, even split the player base up if you have to. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's not big of a player base, but I think make a game a certain way. Like you, you have a vision for a game and make it that way instead of 
always like this is going to be controversial instead of always listening to your player base i think he know, listens it's... too much as well yeah, it was a, not the end not the first time also with the nc max they may went a little bit overboard that's because the community was screaming nerf nc max nerf nc max and now they did it and now people are playing nc are complaining because they over nerfed it did they i don't really play it play it at max so yeah it, uh, the, the discussion died down a little but <laughs> some people are really angry about that basically i st i still am debating whether the nc max needed a nerf at all like there was something about it that needed changing, but at range, the NC Max was not very good before. No, that was kind of the balancing aspect of it. But like I've said before, the the problem with that is that the majority of the fighting happens in bases near points and enclosed areas. And yeah, that's why the Max is going to murder you. Yeah. And that's probably why the Ma NC Max shined so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I pretty much everybody's aware of the meme that the NC love um, bio labs because bio labs are enclosed. You've got to get in the buildings mm -hmm. to take points, and yeah, we're going to eat shotguns. And now I think the NC Max shines even more when it comes to hallways. To be honest, because they have a little bit more range. Mm -hmm. Their damage is not as good though, like damage per shot. I think. You can't just one pump people at that range at range anymore. I mean, you couldn't before, but like, y you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, with a tighter spread, you're just going to get more pellets on a target at a greater distance. So it's just going to yeah. do less damage. But you know, if you have more damage but nothing hits the enemy, what does that matter? Yeah. I don't know. They tried buffing the NC Max a little bit after mm -hmm. That's true. the whole nerf. But I don't know. Again, yeah. I don't play it often enough. No, I basically like one overarching opinion about balance is that the more freedom you give players, the harder it is to balance it. I mean, you know, back in the day before they put the lattice system in, it was just the hex system. Anybody could go anywhere and capture any base. The problem yeah. we ran into was People were just ghost capping. They were taking entirely pl entire platoons just to take a base, and they were literally avoiding fighting each other. They were just chasing each other, each other in circles, capping bases, nothing else. Boring. Yep. And then that took people away from the actual fights, and that made things worse for other players who were like actually looking for the combat. I'm just uh, wrong the winner for the giveaway. Uh... We have a winner. We haven't got a winner. <laughs> it was 50 50 between Sam Sam and Gaming Job. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Sam Sam, you're not the winner. Gaming Job is uh, today the winner. Uh, having said that, though, there is still not a giveaway going uh, on Gleam on my YouTube page. Just a little. I'll post it quickly. <laughs> so you have another shot at it. I will present you a PM uh, Gaming Job with the code. Have fun with it. Congratulations. Yeah. What was I going to say? Uh, About the balance, think... yeah, go on. No, you go ahead. I was also thinking, we also got a construction players, players that like to build bases. Yeah. Uh, there's a, of course, they are important to, to, to make all the strikes, routers and such things, but also to shoot off for like a space to, uh, for example, Hold of other hold of other factions that are fighting, for example, at a at a busy road. But you also want them to have a game where they would feel happy, more or less. You have to make so many people happy. It's I think really hard to balance like that. Yeah, I think construction would be a lot better served that had some kind of way to supplement bases, not like completely build over them, but to like add on in ways that would make each battle like a little different. I mean, as it, as it is right now, you can't build anywhere near a base and then there's not a whole lot of impulse to like take on a base unless you're really getting sick and tired of those orbital strikes. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I mean, the base building is cool. Uh, I think, you know how engineers can place down those little walls? Mm -hmm. 
if if engineers or even more classes got even more smaller objects like around the size of that those small walls those little ones that they place just different kinds of objects that would make it have more variety within a base and then outside of a base you could have ants building larger structures and fortifications if but there's really right now there's no incentive to build bases all that much most Mm -hmm. people just if there's a base or if there's a point without a base around it people will just wait until the enemy caps it at the next base and so that they can fight them where a base actually is at least that's from my experience because there's no guarantee that people will even come to a, like those no base points sometimes like for any time i've tried to build a base around a point it just ends up me there's no fight comes to me at all i even though i've built a whole base around it so it's just a waste of time most mostly i would you imagine see, that by the time you get the the base done the fight's pretty much moved on somewhere else yeah you're building it by yourself well, even with me and one other person, we try, but uh, I think it, I think the mistake they made with the base building at first was not including bases on all continents that you could build around. Like they, I think it was Indar they changed first, or was it Amorish? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, either either one. They only changed yeah. one one continent to include base building points. I think if you're going to go into something, you need to go into it all the way and and not just half asset kind of. I think what they could have done was just cleared out all those construction sites on Hassan and made them buildable bases. Yeah. Yeah. Because as it stands right now, it, Hassan doesn't feel entirely finished because of those construction bases. Mm-hmm. There's what, like four of them? Out of how many bases on Hassan? True. Uh, the the construction bases, which do you mean? Um, there's uh, like four different construction sites on um on Hassan. They're called like construction site alpha, beta, gamma, something like that. And they're all pretty much the same. They're just in work. They haven't been they haven't been individualized yet. There there used to be a lot more of them and uh Daybreak said that they were or not Daybreak, SOE at the time, I think. Mm-hmm. Said that they were going to finish Hassan over time, like replace these in construction, like in universe they're under construction. Yeah, and over time the bases were going to be replaced with completed bases. Yeah, that uh, kind of fell by the wayside. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. And it's like now two years ago, and they still haven't finished it. Yeah. Nah. Wow. Okay, I didn't even know that. <laughs> that's I. Mean, that's kind of the main reason I'm kind of worried for Osher. Because Hassan still isn't technically finished, like they said. But, but to, it's understandable because yeah. the game did change hands and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I think Osher is as much a test bed for their new um, development tools as it is like a, an actual continent. So maybe once they get Osher um, finished and they've uh, gotten a handle on their new tools, maybe they'll revisit Hassan. Yeah, maybe. I wouldn't count on it, though. We can help. <laughs> True. We're also going to see the uh, Planetside Arena. Um, I lost the name. Bastion Fleet Carriers in Austria. And I'm really looking forward to how that will be. Because yeah, they, they haven't really nailed anything down yet. But yeah, it's, got, it's to going to be they, warp gates, right? It's going to be flying warp gates. But... Yeah, that could potentially move. Which is going to be interesting. I mean, if they do that. I got to imagine there's a lot of technical hurdles to get around for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, especially with planetside code. It's... Yeah. I mean, I'm sure just getting a spawn point to work is already hard enough, let alone one that moves. I mean, are they going to be constantly in motion, or are they just going to, like, warp themselves from one spot to another? We don't know. Yeah. All speculation. Yeah. Well, mostly speculation. They have said they want, or at least the devs said 
hey, wouldn't it be cool if they moved? <laughs> That'd be neat. Neat. <laughs> That's as much as we've got so far. I have to say though, they're such a small dev team. I think it's really they're doing a really good job. Not only with X11, but also just if they if they if they do it, like really finish a complete continent. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, but I first have to see it. They already delayed the Osha. I think they wanted to be here like beginning of 2019, and now it's end 2019. And I think it will be end 2019 PTS, and maybe 2020 we'll see it on live. We will see. There's an, no way Osha is getting finished. The, like. Did they actually say beginning of 2019? I think they, they want... Uh, I don't know, beginning. I think they at least, at least want... They aimed for, like, summer. Okay. Because <clears throat> that, oh. that... That, to me, sounds unreasonable. Yeah. Uh, gaming, job, <laughs> gaming Job mentions the, um, the Planetside Arena drop chips. And I'm I'm wondering if the code in that just treats them more like a um a pilotless uh galaxy, just dropping people off rather than being ah. like a, um an actual an actual warp gate where you spawn in and then choose where to go. Yeah, that's. I mean, they will fly a straight path, so that could be possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't even thought about that before. We will see. They also wanted to introduce a new end game, a new final alert with, with Osha. And I don't know how they're going to do that, but we'll also see. It's really a test bet, like you mentioned. Well, there was, was this work in progress alert uh, that, was, that they kind of mentioned. Um, I don't know if... It, I mean, and they didn't actually mean to. It was either leaked or they kind of mentioned it where... There's a new vehicle they were working on. It was basically like a big tank with a, a giant cannon on it. And uh, you'd have to control, like take control of the tank. One, one of the factions would take control of the tank and, for as long as they can kind of deal. And it, it would have a lot of health and probably, I assume, fire slowly, but do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I would swear that had been put in the test server at some point i remember seeing a video maybe it was uh serious i th maybe video on it. but that i th i don't know what where that's at anymore that's yeah that's probably sitting on the back burner right now yeah i mean the anazoka is still using mbt big tank why not <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, a big they may paywall. be repurposing they might be repurposing that as the uh the nso mbt oh that could be true oh yeah potentially also, I'm just in general curious what kind of max they are planning for. I think they're working at least on a max for the NSO, but I don't know what for kind of special max it will be. Mm. Well, I imagine they'd have the Gorgons. Oh, yeah. There has to be NS weapons only, so... Yeah, that is... I think that's... Those and the Bursters are the only uh, NS weapons available for the max currently. I have no idea what kind of faction traits they'd have, though. No. Probably all rounder, to be honest. Like not good not particularly great at anything, but just like like NS um weapons are kind of not particularly fantastic in one thing and then bad in others. Yeah, they are They're generally just, all rounders. Yeah. I'm 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 wondering more about like actual ability, like the Age oh, of Shield, Lockdown, Zoe. I wonder what they the uh NSO would have. I don't know. I think the devs yeah. even know themselves right now. Yeah. I think otherwise they would have, you know, brought the NSO with, with, together with something else like that already. But, I mean, I think that together with Oshid, I think there will be a big patch. The question though is, will it also make NSO available to everyone? That might be the case. That might be also a bit too soon. We will see. Hmm. I, uh, I don't think they should give it to everyone. Maybe if the player base is small enough. But right now, not everyone, clearly. No. Not everybody's... I, I think... I like ha still having the factions and then just seeing a robot every once in a while. Uh, yeah, I, I have actually seen more NSO than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, to me, that and shows I... that there are actually a lot of members still. I was thinking, okay, mm -hmm, yeah. that because it's members only, I, I didn't know what kind of ratio we have, like free players and then member players. But I see, I'm seeing a lot of robots here. Um, speaking of balance, personally, I, th I think, um, I, I, I think this will work in pretty much every game, but I think developers should more often than not balance for the most skilled players, like, and, um, and that way the unskilled players, like it'll kind of, it's a trickle down, I guess, into the less and less skilled so instead of nerfing things so that lower skilled players have an fight, equal fighting chance with higher skilled players, uh, I guess with Planet Side 2, you, you just have to learn the game that way. Like, I know in instance-based matchmaking games, if you balance for the highest players, it just works for everyone else at that point. Would that work in Planet Side 2? I don't yeah, know. That's, I did, I did. that's really iffy. I mean, I, I do understand what you're getting at. There should be a skill ceiling to uh, strive for. But yeah. if I throw you into a boxing ring with a world heavyweight champion, the only thing you're going to learn is what canvas tastes like. <sighs> this is true. Yeah. Yeah. There's got to be, there's gotta be a way for a newcomer to have some kind of chance to at least understand what happened and to maybe if they're inspired if they have a good understanding of the situation to fight back and win but there also should be room for skill and experience to shine through it's a really delicate balance i admit this might be a stupid idea but would it maybe be possible to make like balanced squads so at least your pl the platoons would be like on average on a similar battle rank or wouldn't that work because I mean, platoons they, often try to stay together right depends you, uh, really depends i mean yeah. if you're all in a voice chat and you've all coordinated then you have people stick together but if you're just joining a random squad or platoon from my experience most of the time people are scattered everywhere I mean, I've I've seen a couple of them where you're lucky if everybody's on the same continent. Yeah. True. Yeah. Okay, that's that's true as well. But I was yeah. joining a mentor squad just to see if they were actively mentoring new players. But I I just felt the the mentor squads were so bad in general that they could not do anything. They were not able to take over bases. They were not able to actually do anything basically. So I think they missed like a few experienced players. That's, that's, I, I think I, that's yeah. Go okay, ahead, You first. <laughs> okay, I I don't think mentor squads are meant to take bases. Like, I think it's yeah. just for people introduce being introduced to the game for the first time kind of deal. Just learning the basics, like what a base and how to capture a base is kind of deal. I I guess with some people you'd have to actually capture a base for them to understand. But most of the time, it's more like when I'm teaching somebody, at least, it's more like um, what, not just what Sunders are, but how to like understand what, what they are. Like how, how do they relate to and differ from spawn beacons or uh, routers kind of deal. It's, it's not usually about taking bases when I try to teach people, at least. I think I think, I think yeah. one big problem is that a lot of the most experienced players are already in their own squads. They're playing with their friends in their outfits and they're doing their own thing. Yeah. I mean it would be great if we could get them to uh to jump into the mentor squads and try to lead some of the less experienced players, but how do you incentivize that? Directives like make a cool thing that by mentoring a certain amount of players for a certain amount of time you get something special, maybe. Or do they already have that? I know there's a directive tree for um, for leadership, but I have no idea what the reward is. 
I can look that up real quick. There was also this this uh, letter, this left letter from the new soldier thing of or whatever it's called from Nick Silva. And he said they were going to give a spotlight to people that were actively actively uh, leading Manta squads. But oh. I don't know how they measure it. I don't know how they do it. And I don't know what, what kind of spotlight it will be. <laughs> so. Ah, uh, okay. Apparently there's a helmet at the end of the uh, leadership. Uh, helmet, yeah. Yeah. Right. What if they incentivized it by giving people daybreak cash? Ooh. Then, then you run the risk of people abusing that. Oh, that's true. Because then they can just create new characters kind of deal. Mm-hmm. I would like it if it was some kind of like like a, a nameplate you could unlock, like your your name would show up in in like a particular font or color or something to stand out. I mean, that's like the number one thing cosmetics are in this game to stand out. True, stand out on the battlefield with the camo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, would you like, like to have like a different color of name, or really like a title? Hmm. Well, color I mean, of name might be confusing since, like, there um, there's different colors for like squad members and platoon members and all that stuff. So maybe a title, or maybe maybe a special font. That yeah, was not, show up in. I was like thinking if I'm a new player and I see like this guy with a special uh, mental squad collar, like it's easier uh-huh. to follow you and like into a battle. But that is or, also, yeah, yeah, or, like also... A, or like a, a special icon, like a Dorito, a friendly Dorito. Oh yeah, yeah. Up. Instead <laughs> of just the regular triangle, you get something else like a. Like a drill sergeant's insignia or something like that. Yeah, that would actually be cool, yeah. Apparently it's already hard enough to add titles for the deaths. Well, maybe asking too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. I mean, game development is hard. Like, harder than most people realize. I could share a story about that, and I think Brett may have already heard this one. But um, um, if anybody remembers the game Doom 3... I actually made a rebalancing mod for that called True Survival, and since all of the um, all the weapon and enemy uh, stats were all just plain text files, it was easy to edit. But there was one enemy, there was one particular like imp that had two entries in its file, and for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what that second entry was for. I ended up setting all of its damage to off, so it would show up somehow, and I never found it. And so, like, two weeks later, I'm still playing through, and then there's this one cut scene where an imp comes through, like, a, a, a bunch of pipes. And I'm unloading my shotgun into it, and nothing happens. And I had completely forgotten I'd made that edit. So, like, it took me another week to remember that I'd made that edit, and I had to change it so that I could kill that one particular imp. And that was my edit. I can only imagine how much spaghetti code from other people the devs have to go through to fix something in this game. It's true. I think yeah. the way they described it for the ASP system was mm-hmm. it was like lifting, like delicately lifting something, uh, like a t- off of like a table, like just a stack of precarious books almost, and then s- just slowly sliding something underneath it mm-hmm. and having to put it back down, or like a- cards that were balanced or something. You know, like card pyramid, like have, mm-hmm. lifting one of those up, and then having to put that back down and without disturbing it. Yeah, I I would not be surprised. What well, we see right now in the whole patch, I mean, they they fix one thing and they break two other things again. So <laughs> it's it's so strange. Some people are also back to the server performance. Some people are thinking at the hardware that there were issues with the hardware of the servers, but I. I really think it's like a server code problem or yeah I, I honestly believe it's coding yeah yeah it i mean it takes it doesn't take a lot of processing power but it it you don't need like super high end stuff for for servers most of the time like most of the time it's all in the cpu right so you could just you don't need a graphics card for a server right obviously they're using special hardware hopefully and not just consumer hardware 
but upgrading s servers would be a costly endeavor, like the hardware. And then you would probably have to rewrite code mm -hmm. in order to get that har hardware and software to mesh well. So even if it is the hardware, I doubt we'd see any 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 change of that. Maybe we could recycle the parts of the brick server now. Uh, <laughs> upgrade those. Yeah. Pry the hamsters out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I, you start to feel though, if you, when the whole latency thing happened, that the game is really, really dependent on the servers. And actually, they yeah, are yeah. working pretty well normally. I mean, they have to handle more than one thousand players normally, so. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty big load. I don't think many games have have similar similar issues. Yeah, it, it's not just that. It's, it's the players. It's vehicles. It's uh, debris. It's projectiles. Remember, yep. it's got to track every last projectile in the game. Mm. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff for it to keep track of. That's also the reason why it's so hard to run too, because your computer has to send. Not probably doesn't have to do it as much as servers do, but. Uh, because it's a client-side game, your computer also has to do some of the processing and then send that to the server, like your position and where you're shooting mm -hmm. and where your bullets are going kind of deal. <clears throat> send that to the server and has to you know, process it first. And then the server has to process how that relates to everything else and then send it back to you. And that's a lot to do when it comes to for latency mm -hmm. especially with blind side too <clears throat> it's got a lot more to do than say some 5v5 counter-strike go sort of yeah way. oh yeah i heard somebody was complaining that the servers are running on too low hertz i think they're running on 24 hertz or something like that hey you got you got counter-strike servers that are running on like 144 hertz servers so <laughs> it's so hard to compare it used to be, source games used to be ticks, from what I... Yeah, that's what they used to call that. Yeah. I don't oh, know. It hurts is, yeah, it's about monitors, I'm sorry. No, it hurts, it, it's is the it, same. It's, it's the same? same? Oh, it is, okay. So, um, yeah, uh, there was actually a lot of criticism for Blackout at the opening. I think they had a, like, 20 hertz service, uh, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But the thing and people was, people were very unhappy about that. The thing was, during the betas, the open betas, they they were sixty, so that was pretty mm -hmm. pretty decent. And then at the real release, they were like, "Oh god, they downgraded the service, cut costs or something like that." And then it was a big outcry about that. So that's the uh, that was the problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, right now and since Apex Legends released, there's been problems with their servers. Like the game feels good to play, but the hit registry is off and like I've heard that sometimes, uh, like my brother was able to get shot through a wall almost, just because the hit registry was off somehow. Mm. And like you're aiming at people and shooting at people, and your crosshairs on them, even though there's like and they're super close range, but somehow it just doesn't hit. Like yeah, well, you see that's that's where you run into the problem when you have a. Uh server-side calculations. I mean, the client sounds like it's running good, but if the server's doing bad, then you get that kind of situation. Yeah. And, like, even your movement is based off their servers, too, in Apex Legends. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, if the server is slow, you will actually be moving slower. Like, everything will look and be in slow motion kind of deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I, I tell people that um, if uh, servers on Planetside 2 did everything, that's That'd be basically how it plays out for us. I mean, instead of like you go around a corner and then you die, it's you go around the corner, you lag back out, and then you die. Do you think it would be better? I don't know. No, I don't. I don't think that. I don't think Planet Side Two could really handle um, everything be calculated server side. No. The downside though is that it, they've got those lag wizards, right? <laughs> People with high latency, high ping, or even people that deliberately pull out their network uh, cable just to, <laughs> to start extra lag to easier kill people. Yeah, when I was That's on the my downside. 
I, I that used to happen to me where uh, I was used to live with my at at home, right? And mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have great internet. I would still play Planet Side Two though, and uh, there were times when the internet would just be really bad, and I could just run straight into an enemy base, and they wouldn't be able to hit me because I'd just be all over the place. I could just take generators as long as I didn't stand completely still. I could take generators. I couldn't capture points, but uh, I wouldn't be able to get shot. And I don't know. I think that's. I think that's pretty silly. Yeah, that's yeah. Just, silly. You, you're gonna have problems either which way you go. That's the issue. Yeah. Uh, Sam Sam wants to know about the uh, charger. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's still garbage. Yeah, I'm so. Ooh, I'm so. I'm angry about the charger. <laughs> Mm. What's wrong with the charger? I don't play NC. What's wrong? Yeah, uh, I can so, explain. Yeah, I can go explain ahead. Uh, yeah, I did the review on that. Um, the problem with the charger is that it's a competent carbine for the first five rounds in its magazine. After that, it's a weak carbine with an extremely long reload time. And it's only got 25 rounds in the magazine. The whole mechanic is reloading the gun. Mm -hmm. And it's takes so long compared to the other new new yeah uh, it's i don't know if they changed it but last time i looked it actually takes longer to reload than any of the nc's assault rifle which is crazy mm -hmm. apparently ralph said that they want to change it hopefully they get around to it because i just don't see the worth in it right now yeah i mean i i think that the uh kindred is a better nc carbine than the charger is kindred mm-hmm Kindred is the one that has the uh, the burst at the beginning of, of firing, fires faster. Oh, and it's NC. actually one sixty seven. You said NC right Kindred. No, no, the, just the Kindred, the TRs. Okay, sorry. I know it's all good. Uh, yeah, no, it's. I'd say the other two are way better. Mm -hmm. Even even the Horizon, it's, it's so gimmicky, but it's even still better than the Charger. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about the Tengu's buff? I never used the Tengu before the buff, so I can't really compare. I don't know. Uh, I haven't used it after the buff yet, but on paper it sounds pretty good. Because the hipfire accuracy was not good before. Now it's I, I, I never used it. Uh, My, did... They also My experience with it was people trying to use it at long range, and it just never worked for them. I was wondering what they were trying. Yeah, I mean, it's not—it's an SMG. It's not supposed to be long range. Yeah. No, that's a shotgun SMG. So people yeah. trying to pelt, <laughs> people trying to pelt me with it at like ninety meters. I'm like, uh, no, it's not going to work out for you, buddy. They also above the Naginata. And if you guys play with that one before. Uh, the... Yes. The Naginata. Am I thinking of the right one? The um, the ninety round LMG. LMG. Uh, yes. The NS LMG. Yeah. Yes, NS LMG. It, it, it needed it. It's just, it's a good like lane weapon where you set down a firing point and just pour lead down range. But the problem is in this game that gets you sniped. That gets you yeah. sniped. Yeah. Did they increase, like, increase its accuracy slightly? That you didn't have to stay still. Wait, how did they buff it? I don't know what the buff is, but people started saying to me that they, this was the most OP all-around weapon now for NS, so... Let me see if I can find out what they did to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up too. <laughs> also, just I want to mention this uh, while you guys are looking it up. It is tonight the Grand Final, the Planetside Battles team. Uh, they're playing the Planetside Battles team, and tonight they're playing, if I'm correct, it's Bax versus DDRG. Uh, I think Bex is a US-based team and DDRG is mainly Europe, but it's kind of cool. Uh, they're playing tonight. After the show, we'll host them so you can see, see them yourselves. Really good players in them, and it's the final, the final game, the grand final. So uh, it's promising. Hmm. Have you guys seen Yes. Vertical recoil minimum from 0 0.6 to 0 0.4. Vertical recoil max from 0 0.8 to 0 0.6. And that's it. So the recoil is better. So that's pretty good. So it's not like I'm insane. 
So it's not as dependent on having to stand still to reset it then? I mean, I'm sure it is. It's just... It's it's slightly better. Hmm. I pr I myself probably still wouldn't be able to use it, hmm. but I'm bad, so. We have come to the uh, final part of the podcast. There, next week, of course, we will be back. Uh, I think on Brat News channel. Or are you available, Brat New? Uh, yeah, I should be. With Cam then. I apologize. Um, oh yeah, with camera, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the mess of my PC right now. <laughs> uh, last chance to ask some questions, otherwise we'll be back uh, next week. Um, you guys, any plans for next week? Uh, no, I, I want to upload more Borderlands, but I have no footage to edit right now. Uh, other than that, I've got nothing... I mean, other than the usual streaming pretty much every day every weekday mm. other than wednesday and the rogue wolf is your beginner's guide ready next week or are you still i'm on it? hoping to have it out sometime monday or tuesday okay. I hope to it. that's cool well for me personally i will be trying to finish the yumi because i really hate the yumi right by now <laughs> is that it's your a, first, first weapon that you've yes, ever played it's a force burst okay. weapon i hate it really awful and oh, I want to get five round burst. Yeah. yeah. They're like three round, and there's no wind up with the other ones. Well, the thing like is, with... I played on, I played on with, with the pulsar again on the Emerald server, uh, and I was like, I miss, I miss automatic weapons so much because I, <sighs> I perform so bad, so much better with the automatic weapon, automatic weapons. But well, just have to. Yeah. Uh, is this is a saying in in English? Bite through the sour apple. Nay, nine. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not an American yeah, saying, but I understand what you're saying. Okay, yeah. Just uh, get rid of it. <laughs> well, we, we say bite the bullet. Bite the bullet, yeah. Something like that. Well, that will be happening next week on my channel. So, um... <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you, thank you. Also, well, uh, congratulations on your 1,000 subs. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. How does it feel? How does it feel? Well, um... I'm still the same fame. <laughs> Alright. Nah, it's, it feels good. Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad people like it. So. Uh... Yeah, he hasn't changed. He still puts his suspenders on one strap <laughs> at a time, like everybody else. Yes. <laughs> now it's your turn to also reach 1,000, boys. So uh, I will try to push you as well. <laughs> oh, I, I couldn't handle it. I'm not really looking for a big audience. All the, all the fame, boys. I'm, I'm still trying to hit 200. <laughs> one day. One day. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you for being here today. I will be hosting the Plansite Battles team, so enjoy and uh, have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. See ya. See ya. <laughs>